Hey, 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 it's Chrissy Lulu. So, today I want to do a little story time along with my drawing. Um, and this is the story of why I hate Grey's Anatomy. Um, uh, it may seem kind of random, but you'll understand by the end of it. So, my sophomore year, the second semester, I decided to switch rooms because my original rooming situation was a bit too loud for me to sleep at night. I have early classes, so I really do need to sleep and get up early and everything. I loved my roommate, but the dorm just, the dorm situation was not working. So I decided to move to a different dorm, a dorm that my boyfriend at the time was living in. And he said, it was nice, it wasn't too loud, it was pretty quiet. He knew someone living on the floor I was planning to move to, so he knew that from asking her that it was a quiet floor and it was all girls. There was no boys on that floor. So I had assured that it was going to be pretty quiet and I should have been able to sleep at night. Um, when I went and met the girl, I instantly got I want to say bad vibes. Um, she was nice. She was very welcoming to me. Um, I met her when her old roommate was still in the room. She was packing up to leave because she was moving out. And one thing I instantly noticed about this girl was that she was very much like me. She was someone who was into games. She wasn't a very like loud and outgoing person. She just seemed like she was a very, very much like me. Um, but I kind of ignored that, the feelings of, oh, what if she doesn't like me because I'm a lot like her current roommate. I have a lot of the same interests. I see that she's a gamer and I am also a gamer. And I can already tell just from the brief meeting I've had with this old roommate that we have a lot in common. Um, but I decided to push that to the back of my mind because this girl was very nice. Um, and she was a lot older than me too. She was a super senior. She was pretty behind on graduating because she transferred to my school pretty much her senior year. So she was behind on graduating. Anyways, I'm excited to move into the new room. Um, I have to wait all of over break. Um, and finally, I get to go in and finally live in this room. And I'm excited. Um, and the first night I go in there and she stays up till one in the morning watching TV. So I was just kind of like... I hope this isn't not isn't an everyday thing. Um, I won't, wouldn't have a problem with it if it was every once in a while, but I had early classes. I had classes at nine in the morning, nine thirty in the morning, and I had to be up for those. And I had to get up early, and I needed to sleep at night. I had a lot of coursework this semester. I was taking two classes with the same professor who would overload me with a lot of work so I needed my sleep um, and that was kind of the start of our problems um, I kind of found her to be a bit off-putting she didn't really seem to want to talk with me and I very quickly became uncomfortable living in this room with her um, and the staying up till 1 a.m. and beyond every single night watching Grey's Anatomy became a constant and it really made me start to <sighs> criticize a show that I'd never even watched. I'd only heard it through her TV. This TV would keep me up every night. So I decided, okay, well, if she's going to be, you know, watching her own stuff, I'm going to get my phone out when I need to sleep, put some earbuds in, put on some music, and fall asleep myself. What I didn't know was this was extremely insulting to her. 
um, me taking out my phone and putting earbuds in because she was being loud and not saying anything was insulting. She's like, if you have a problem, talk to me about it. I was kind of like, whoa, okay then. So that was the beginning of anxiety for me <laughs> kind of going in that room because I could tell that she was not happy with me. She was kind of pissed off by me and off put by me and she didn't want me there um and she'd always she'd get very uh, like upset by me leaving in the morning because she'd stand in front of the mirror which is on the back of our door um well i think is it no it's like right next to the door though it's like right in the doorway is where the mirrors in the storm were and she'd stand there and like take forever admiring herself and getting ready and stuff and i'd have to go because i had classes you know later than her or earlier than her so i actually had to get going so i'd have to like push by her and be like excuse me i gotta go like in the morning and she, that would like make her go <laughs> like i insulted her but it's really i just needed to go so like just kind of her giving me this off attitude made me not want to be in my own room. And I started avoiding it more and more and more. Um, and I'd been friends with this girl on Facebook. And she eventually started complaining about me on Facebook. So, of course, I was like, oh, okay. Um, I don't know what I did wrong. I guess anything I do is wrong. Me spending too much time in the room was wrong. And me spending... No time in the room was also wrong by her. And she would just complain about everything, even though her I, it was ironic because her banner on Facebook was all about being positive and all of that stuff. But all she'd do was complain. And she had a nasty attitude and was just nasty to people. And... It was just ironic the things she'd post did not match with kind of the messages she wanted to or she preached with the, like the stuff she bought and the banner she put on Facebook um, and yeah I just didn't feel comfortable I hated kind of like even looking at her side of the room the time I the times I'd spend the most time in my room were when she was not there because I had kind of started to memorize when she was not there. So after I got done on my classes on Monday, Wednesday, Friday, I knew she wasn't going to be there. So I'd hang out in my room with my boyfriend for a bit. And it just, I remember like just shaking with my hand kind of hovering above the doorknob, not wanting to go in ever. I'd go back I, it just got later and later at night that I'd go back to my room because I didn't want to deal with her. I did not want to see her. And I just, it was giving me a lot of anxiety on top of all of the stress I already had from a heavy, hard semester. So, really was not a good time for me. And my lack of sleep at night ended up making me fall asleep in classes and everything. And, I mean, I guess this is kind of a tangent it's not really related to the story but uh this girl was obsessed with lularo all her clothes was like lularo crap and i have a single thing from lularo it's like a little shawl it was the only thing i liked i went to a house party once with my mom because my mom was invited i think she bought leggings and they ended up having a hole in them surprise surprise but yeah, I remember just everything was just not flattering. And the clothes were really ugly. I remember that from that. And she had a huge collection of Lulu And she'd be trying them on every day and then taking selfies. And I was like, is that not a little full of yourself? To just try on picture clothes and then take pictures of yourself? Maybe it was just me at the time and trying to find things <laughs> to kind of complain about her. But I was like, uh. and I already didn't really like Lulero much as a company. I've learned a lot more about them now, especially since there's a whole chase going on with them. And, you know, they're 
a well-known MLM. So, yeah, um, I don't know what someone who's got a whole closet of LuLaRoe stuff, what, what that says about someone. I don't know. But, yeah, she was kind of, kind of a basic bitch, if that makes sense. She was just really nasty and would wear basic clothing. She's you know, what I would think of, like, a mean girl, I'd suppose. Um, but yeah, just the anxiety this was creating for me and the stress and not being able to sleep. My boyfriend ended up convincing me to go talk to my RA. So I did. And I actually really regretted doing that because I felt like it created more problems than it solved. Um, and that was something I was worried about from the very start. Um, she wanted, we never had filled out a roommate agreement because I'd moved in in the second semester. And the roommate agreement is how you kind of decide to solve issues between each other, like when you guys go to bed, when you do homework and all that stuff. Luckily, my roommate agreement this year and last year worked out fine I never had to go back to it but she refused to do one um and my RA was kind of like well let's let's bring her in and then we can try and fill out a roommate agreement together um and I was like I don't really want to do that I feel like that's gonna make things worse and I had my boyfriend with me and he was kind of like well you gotta give it a shot it might make things better um why don't you try so I was finally and from pushing on both sides I was like final finally like okay we'll do we'll do it um and it happened on a night that I was already planning on going out to dinner and seeing a movie with my boyfriend and I remember we ended up meeting in the kitchen in our basement um of the dorm because we lived in the basement um and she tried to get her to kind of fill out the roommate agreement and she met with both of us and she was kind of like well I want you guys to both be happy here and she was kind of like well I'm not happy um I'm not happy here I don't understand the blah, blah, blah. I'm trying to kind of like paint me kind of as a bad guy and how she's not kind of like she's not happy or comfortable living in her room and I'm not happy or comfortable living in this room either and she started crying and kind of ran out and refused to do it um so I was kind of like she ended up a lot of the stuff she was saying were just lies as I flat out told my RA like she's not being honest I don't think she's being honest um She's never tried to turn down the volume on her TV, and, um, she's just trying to blame the situation on me, and that's kind of the vibe I got from her, and I was kind of like, okay, whatever, I'm not going back to my room right now, I don't want to deal with it, I'm not going to go in there on her crying, um, I'm going to let her cool off. And I'm going to go out and try and enjoy the rest of my night. Um, so I ended up going out to dinner with my boyfriend. And I was still really upset about the situation and everything. But he tried to cheer me up and everything. And I tried to stay with him for as long as I possibly could. Because I was really dreading going back to my room that night. And I remember when he was finally like, okay, I'm going to go to bed. I ended up going downstairs and I just sat on the stairs until like one or two in the morning until I was so tired I could barely keep my eyes open and I just sat there on the stairs just kind of digging around on my phone and I was hoping that she would be asleep by that point I come back to the room and she's not there so I decide to try and lay in bed and then she comes back and it's very obvious that she's been waiting for me to come back. And she tries to be as obnoxious as possible. She, like, is trying to be loud and stuff. And she's obviously trying to keep me up and keep me from sleeping. So I was just kind of like, you know what, I'm not going to deal with this pettiness. I'm just going to 
get out my earbuds, plug them into my phone, put on some music, and go to bed. I'm just going to ignore it. I'm not going to say anything. I'm not going to do anything. I'm I'm done. (laughs) So that was kind of the attitude I'd had. And I knew she had had problems with me, too, because she had a boyfriend who she hadn't been with for very long. But she'd call him and then loudly complain about me on the phone to him while I was in the room. So it was just kind of like she wasn't trying to hide the fact that she was complaining about me. And it was obviously about me. Just she wouldn't say it was me. Pretty much. It was just heavily implied. It was me and her knew that it was me. So yeah, um, I ended up, we ended up having a conversation with my RA and the RD of the building. So the RD is like the the big head honcho. He's the resident director. Director. So we ended up meeting with him to discuss what was going on because obviously the meeting with my RA didn't work and everything. So I ended up meeting with him and she just pretty much is lying to my face again and ends up walking out and is like, well, she's the problem. I'm not a problem. If she wanted me to turn it down, she could have just asked, blah, 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 blah. I don't complain or bad about on my phone, blah, 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 blah. So just kind of like lying and trying to blame the situation on me. I was just kind of like, well, (laughs) I'm not comfortable living in this room to the RD. Kind of like after he left, I wasn't comfortable talking in front of her. I wasn't comfortable even being in my room. So I kind of expressed this to my RD and everything and like told him straight up that I thought she was lying about a lot of the things that she said because that was just not how she was. Um, and I ended up, he ended up, um, getting together a couple of RAs to kind of help me go around and talk to people who were in singles that night, and I was able to actually find, like, that night a a room to live with, and with, like, a really nice girl, and, like, this girl was, like, genuinely nice, um, and she was about the same age, actually, as the roommate I was currently living with, and they were both super seniors, so... I ended up being able to actually, like, the next day, like, get all that paperwork filled out. And I was able to move in, like, very quick. Like, I was really surprised. I thought I'd have to go in a couple more days living in that hellhole. And then all of a sudden it was just over just like that. And my boyfriend was, like, a huge help during the time because I could always... He was very open to having me sleep in his room because I was not comfortable sleeping in mine and like that night he's like hey listen I'm not gonna make you like stay another night in my room so you can stay in my room so he was like really helpful during that time and I could just stay in his room (laughs) and away from her and I didn't really have to see her again I was able to move I kind of had my stuff packed up um and just in there and then I moved out like the next day. It was a Tuesday. It was like a Monday or a Wednesday, and it was like the big block where she wasn't there. So I moved out while she wasn't even home, and just moved on with my life. And I was just kind of very happy that I didn't really have to deal with that anymore, and like all the anxiety that I was feeling from this situation just kind of went away overnight. So. <laughs> It was very nice. Um, it was very nice, and to that, there was like two or three weeks of school left, so I got to live with this girl for like two or three weeks, and she was like really nice and helped me a lot. Um, and I was happy. It was kind of what I was hoping for with my current situation that I didn't get. Um, but yeah, that's kind of the reason why I can't stay at Grey's Anatomy. Um, number one, she played it every single night, and number two, if there's that many accidents in your freaking hospital, and so many people who are dying, like, that's ridiculous, you need to get, like, yourselves checked, there's something wrong, (laughs) it's just, ugh, that's not what you want to listen to when you're trying to fall asleep, people screaming and crying, ugh, I just... I can't stand it. I don't. I don't want to watch about it. Watch it. I don't want to talk about it. I don't even want to hear about it. I hate seeing stuff about it. It just reminds me of that situation. I don't know if you guys have ever had an experience like this, but 
to let me know down below. Um, I had fun recording this. Um, yeah, I expect some more in the future. Um, I had fun doing a little story time with you. I hope to tell you more about my life and everything. Hopefully you can learn something. Um, if you want to check out my social media, links are in the description. Um, make sure to like it. And if you want to see more from me, make sure you subscribe. So, yeah. See you guys later. Bye.